thank you so much for joining me today, giving us a sense of uh, astrology and all of the beautiful things that you uh, are obviously aware of and um, are your talents. Your beauty radiates, your knowledge illuminates, your wisdom is divine. And I'm so, so grateful for this opportunity to, um, to have you on the show. Hello, beautiful beings, and welcome to Real Life Burlesque. I'm Red Hot Annie, and in today's episode, I'm going to share a profound and transformative interview that I did back in May with Kateria Nose. Kateria is an astrologist, a coach, and a metaphysician, and super knowledgeable about astrology. And I got to sit down with her during the waning moon in Scorpio, which was a major turning point and transition for me in my career. And it was uh, her reading of my natal chart as well as the interview that just made a huge magical impact on the choices that I've made since then. Um, so I'm super grateful to be able to share her interview and her wise words with you. Check her out at Kateria Knows on Instagram. I originally found you, Kateria, um, through Return of the Gods about a year ago. Um, that that was what popped up in my feed. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is really interesting. And just looking at the... Um, uh, you know, there's not a lot of people who I feel like use the terms God and goddess when they're talking about um, sort of the spiritual awakening. A lot of people, I think, have like a peripheral grasp of that, but the goddess and the idea of the goddess is something that was really important to me from the beginning um, mm -hmm. of my spiritual journey and even was the seed of my, of my first awakening was the idea of like, oh, maybe I'm not just uh, just a just some random human, but maybe I have some divinity inside me that I can cultivate. And so, um, Return of the Gods was like, oh my gosh, people are doing like this is already this already exists. Um, and I know that that you're a mainstay, or you're part of that uh, production. Could you maybe give us a little uh, idea of what that event is like and what that event means to you? Well, yeah, I am actually the creator of the Real Family Reunion, Return of the Gods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the Return of the Gods event is about the fact that we are experiencing a great awakening that we won't experience for another 25,000 years. So we need to celebrate that energy and it's the return of God consciousness within us as human beings. It's about, and God consciousness is about our higher selves of, you know, merging with our lower selves and us demonstrating and acting within that knowingness and that energy. And so I definitely have my own understanding when it comes to source, God, evil. So source is the creator of all things, everything in existence, but everything in existence is good and evil although it all works for the greater good at the end of the day, even if it's evil. But um, so Return of the Gods is about celebrating that good energy, that God quality of source. We've been dealing with a lot of the evil energy of source over the past 12,000 years since the ice age and slavery and all of the things that we've been experiencing as human beings. So Return of the Gods is about God consciousness coming back into us and us uh, walking within our divinity. And so with the, the uh, Real Family Reunion, Return of the Gods, it's about celebrating that energy. We have different speakers and teachers that come um, to be celebrated. We honor different community activists, elders and healers, natural, natural healers and things of the sort. And it's all about celebrating the goodness that's taking place on earth. It's a very royal event. Everyone is dressed up as kings and queens, gods and goddesses. It's a beautiful event. And it is, it is a, an event that is primarily for the celebration of melanated African-American people who've been beaten down so much and told they were just these horrible things. And it's like, no, you're a god. You're a goddess, activate that energy within you, live in your truth and celebrate that now. Cele we're celebrating the fact that we're no longer in bondage, no longer oppressed, no longer, you know, it's, it's a celebration of that. When you talk about these cycles and you talk about this sort of ending of this um, 25,000 year cycle, are, is this part of the age of Aquarius that you hear about? So, with the 25,000 year cycle, it's more so dealing with the uh, processions. So we have processions 
every 12,000, 13,000 years, roughly speaking. And the processions are of Capricorn and Cancer. Santos Bonacci really explains this a lot better. Mm. Nevertheless, we, we are ending a 12,000 year procession of Capricorn right now and going into a 12,000 year procession of Cancer. So we will have this cycle of a great awakening again, but it will happen in the sign of Capricorn. Um, the procession will happen in Capricorn. You know, the, as far as the sign goes, uh, I think it will be in the sign of Capricorn with the age. So we have processions, which are 12,000 year cycles, and we have ages, which are approximately 2,166 year cycles. So when, um, when we're talking about the age of Aquarius and this letting go of sort of this Pisces energy, um, I feel like this is a great place to kind of talk about astrology because astrology is what actually really drew me into um, your work. You have such a um, insightful way of, um, of, of describing different astrological things. It's different than what you can just say, let's Google. If I'm like, oh, my moon is in Aries and I Google that and then it pops up with some information, it's so different. Um, I, I think one of the, the turning point in my connection to you was when you were talking about um, the, um, how do I say this? It was about Mercury or like your different planets and how you want to um, move towards their elevated. Exalt exalted. Exalted. That's the very one. Would you mind uh, explaining a little bit about your astrology um, and your take on it? And maybe even just give us a little bit of a basic primer. So, yeah, I've been studying astrology since I was 11 years old and I, I am now 34. I just became absolutely obsessed with the science when I found out there was a science that could tell someone about themselves. I'm like, there's no way it would know anything about me. I'm so unique and different. And then find out I'm the most unique and different sign, which is Aquarius. Um, and they read me like a book and I, I just couldn't fathom it. It was kind of creepy, weird, but fascinating all in once. And so um, when it comes to me studying astrology, as long as I have, and also reading different articles on Google, uh, hearing different astrologers speak, and there's so many astrologers in the world, I just know that um, I have to be my authentic self with speaking about it. And I have Mercury in the sign of Aquarius. So my Mercury is exalted, and it's in a favorable place of uh, for Mercury to be in, but I think in weird abstract ways. So my astrology is going to come out in, in these weird ab abstract ways, yet, and nevertheless, the sign Aquarius rules astrology. And I have my sun in astrology. I mean, in, in Aquarius, I have my Mercury in Aquarius. So I see astrology in a, a, a particular way as a second language for myself. So what I was meaning when I was talking about exalting your planets, uh, the exaltation of the planets is the fact that every planet has a position of an exaltation. Every single planet has a position of an exaltation, a fall, or a detriment. Falls and detriments are heavy placements for the planets to be in. Exaltation is the very best place for the planet to be in. And so if we ourselves take our chart and learn all of the planetary positions, and then we find out what the exaltation energy of that placement is, and we begin to develop the exalted characteristics, we will be living in our highest uh, state of existence. When you have these planets in certain signs and certain houses and things of the sort, it doesn't mean that you have this excuse to be a shitty person now because you have this planet in a fall or in a detriment. No, that's just letting you know, this is what you came with. This is what you're working with. And this is where some of your obstacles are. But what is the best expression of this planet? Oh, the best expression of Mars is Capricorn. That's sustained energy. That's being mature with your anger. That's, you know, um, handling things in a respectable manner. That is uh, uh, paying attention to what you are creating within your reputation, within all that you do. You know, yet and nevertheless, Mars is at home in the sign of Aries. So you do want to demonstrate those energies as well. 
So that means I'm going to be direct, but I'm going to still be mature. I'm going to still conduct myself in an honorable fashion, and I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to be fearless and bold with in doing so. That's the exalted expression of Mars. And so that's what I was talking about when it came to that video with all of the planets exalting the energies of them all. But looking at your own planet it's first and their signs in their houses and seeing what the trouble areas may be and then learning how to exalt them. I love that. That makes a lot of sense to me because as somebody who has Mercury and Neptune conjunct in Sagittarius, I feel like, ah, like information is really, uh, I feel like there's a lot of information around. Overwhelming. Exactly. And then I feel like even sometimes communicating that information wants to go very Neptune-y. Very yeah. like, can we just talk about this in a general, like, let's all be friends. Let's just, <laughs> and, it, and um, so that was really important to me to hear that idea of Mercury in an its exalted space and that it wasn't um, a victim of fate. That my natal chart didn't just dictate a way that I had to be, but I could in fact continue to evolve in it. And I think that's like such an important part of the entire spiritual journey. Yes, absolutely. You're, stuck. You're never stuck. No, this whole journey is about growth, evolution, but ultimately it's about living your life. Yeah. Yeah. We live many lives. So We're living this one. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it as much as you can. It's a fucking beautiful ass reality. It's, it's true, gorgeous it's human life. Like I, I tell people human life is so awesome. Like our bodies, our hair, our cats, the animals, the plants, the water, the way that we experience emotion, the way that we experience sex, our value system, our money system. I'm like, this is so, such a dope ass cool reality that the creator set up because in other worlds and other realities, they're completely different. The emotions are different. You need to enjoy sadness. You're not going to feel sadness in another realm. It's going to be a whole different freaking emotion. It's going to have another name and it's not going to be sadness. You know, all of the emotions that we experience on planet earth are a part of the humanoid experience, you know, and yet in some, and this reality feels so real. There are other realities that we exist in that don't feel that real. And we know that we're dreaming and we're like, Oh, okay, well, I'm going to be here for a while. Let me just look at the colors. You know, there are so many different worlds. Yeah, this one is very um, immersive. It is very, like, it feels like, oh my God, like, it's crazy. And it lasts, we think that it's so short, but it lasts a long time. Be, not, not in the body, but after the body, that it lasts a few generations. Oh, I loved what you were saying. Um, I tuned into your YouTube channel, which I love, by the way. Okay. And you were talking about how, you know, whatever life we've created here will last maybe 500 years past this time that we're alive. Um, and, you know, it's something that you think about, but when you just really take stock of what that means as far as what you create and the energy that you put out there, um, it really adds a certain um, uh, fun seriousness <laughs> like, yeah you need to like be sincere in the moment yeah. yes authenticity is the way you know I mean we could talk about the age of Aquarius all day and Aquarius rules authenticity and you know it, it rules in authenticity too it rules fake things artificiality and all of that yet and nevertheless you always want to be on the higher notion of the sign you know and so Aquarius ruling authenticity uh that's the way that you want to go that's the way that in in i speak about authenticity because while we're in the age of aquarius we're getting these extrasensory capabilities aquarius is the alien you know and so with that being stated we're all kind of telepathic even if we don't know it we can all feel energy you could feel if i'm fake or not 
you can feel if what I'm talking about, I know what I'm talking about. If I'm genuine or if I'm, you know, ill intended or whatever the heck. So my best bet is to be my most authentic self and to be completely transparent because you know what you get from me. You know that this is real and that allows people to connect with me, feel more open with me. But it also, I love it because it keeps fake people away because yeah. people are like, you know what, she's a real one. I'm not going to even mess with her. I actually send a lot more people away than them coming to me because they themselves are not real or authentic with themselves. And they know that I'll be able to see through them, but I'm like the average person can see through you too. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think of this a lot when I think about socialization and how girl, you know, cause I've been doing burlesque for the last 13 years, which is something that we kind of talked about for a second. And yes. a lot of people come into it like, Oh, I'm just supposed to be this kind of person. I, I've been socialized to be a good girl my whole life. And then they don't realize that that socialization about being a good girl has put this lacquer over the top of who they really are. Yeah, it is so ugly. Yeah, exactly. It's unattractive. Acrylic, yeah, exactly. It's totally unattractive. And it's really difficult to connect to people when you're not sure if you're getting the real deal. True. Absolutely. I see it so much and it's, it's society. Society has these certain stigmas of how we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do it, how we're supposed to do it. And it has us so misconstrued. And a thing about it is it was done on purpose. It was done on purpose for the oppression of the people, because if people really just acted like themselves, did like themselves, all of these things, they will be more sovereign within their beings. They will be more free. They wouldn't feel the need to appoint a government official for anything of the sort. They will allow their higher self, their higher calling and their higher being to govern them themselves. And, you know, um, and, and also when it comes to, oh, girl, supposed to be like this, extremely powerful, but the way that society has shaped us to be is to be a lesser powerful being. So we won't have access and won't utilize the powers that we have so that the beings in power will be able to maintain a level of control over the people by encapsulating that divine feminine energy, the true divine feminine energy beyond the socialization of what femininity is. I'm, I'm in that space right now of breaking gender roles. Mm. You know, we've been talking about breaking gender roles off of women for quite some time now with the feminist movement, yet we have not broken men out of their bondage. And we really need to speak about breaking the gender roles of men. And I'm so happy that we are under that waning moon of the full moon in Scorpio, because it is very much so assisting with breaking that gender role concept for men as well as women. And all of these things, all of these stereotypes in 20, 2022 to 2023 is going to greatly be pioneering this particular movement in, in such a dynamic way. I'm, I'm excited to see it. Would you like to share more about that? Well, yeah, uh, let's just talk you know, I would like to speak on the Scorpio full moon in general. So we had a Scorpio full moon last Monday, yet and nevertheless, the full moon phases last for two weeks. The new moon phases last for two weeks, extended to six months. So we are under the waning full moon and Scorpio energy, and we have to think about the things that Scorpio represents. Scorpio represents death, transformation, transition, sex. That's the gender and all of that, the gender roles, the sex of a person, you know, and it represents as well other people's resources, loans, stocks, and bonds, you know, other people's money, inheritances, and things of the sort. So the stock market. So right now, when it comes to the waning um, moon, full moons are about culminations, celebrations, as well as releasing, letting go and endings. So right now we are letting go of certain things in regards to death, transformation, rebirth processes, you know, a sex, uh, I mean, um, other people's resources, money, all of that type of stuff. This is a time where those things are being brought to the highlight and also being whisked and washed away. Also Scorpio rules traumas and some 
psychology. This is a time where your own traumas within your body from your past are being brought to the fore for you to see them so that you can heal on a deeper level and whisk and wash away your traumas, you know, um, and traumas that we experience physically is, is one thing, but they get trapped in the cellular memory of ourselves and they are stuck with us psychologically. So it's, it's about us renewing ourselves uh, psychologically, sexual traumas, uh, financial traumas, abuse, any type of trauma is ruled by the sign of Scorpio. So right now this uh, Scorpio waning moon is helping us to recognize those things recognize those energies and, and heal from them so i'm taking it upon myself and I, I love this sign uh scorpio also rules power the occult the government uh ritual and deeper spirituality and things like that too and depending upon how you work this moon before it came about you will either be reinvigorated with a level of power or you will feel that your power is being uh dissipated from you or is disintegrating essentially so the scorpio full moon shows you where you are losing power where you are gaining power where you even have it or where you may lack it but depending upon yourself and how you may have been displaying yourself before this moon you would either be regaining power powering up rebirthing or going through a transition and a decline so how do we give our power away? We give our power away by miscellaneous sexual activity that is unhealthy for our spirits and things of the sort. We um, disrupt our power when it comes to our finances by the way that we spend and utilize our finances, fraudulent activity, all of those things. We um, lose our power when it comes to not healing on a psychological level. We lose our power when it comes to dealing with um having the the need to be connected to something else another power source like of uh, the government like if you are codependent and you you base your life on the energy of another person of a certain family member who's taking care of you you know all of those things there's so many other ways to lose your power so if before the full moon hit you were tapped into these things on a darker level an incubus energy a succubus energy then when the full moon in scorpio came it's now draining you of that power now on the flip side if you were in integrity with your higher self, your soul, your purpose. And on the lighter end of the spectrum, then with the Scorpio full moon, you will feel charged up and powered up. But you have to know Scorpio is a very tempting sign. And we're in the, it's all about your desires. We're in the season of Taurus, which is rules temptation and the sensual pleasures. So right before the Scorpio full moon, you're given some type of a test to see if you're gonna give your power away. Mine, you have to know what your temptations are. Mine are dealing with sex, okay? So I'm like, I ha I've been celibate for over a year now because I celibate until marriage. And so, but I was tempted with, you know, um, an opportunity to express that and all of that. But I'm like, this is only going to dissipate me because I'm gonna be now thinking about this person because the oxytocin release and da 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 and I'm gonna lose. And so I fought the temptation and it was a big fight to fight. Um, but <laughs> after fighting that, it was hard. Um, after fighting it, I felt powerful with the Scorpio energy, all of my attachments to all things, all people has gone away and I feel mighty. And I, and not even just with the sexual energy, but financially empowered mm -hmm. um, because that's my temptation, you know, powerful when it comes to my relationships, you know, all of these things. Now I'm creating a reality show that deals with love because I understand what I want when it comes to love, because really intelligence is God. And when you have these tempting um, temptations in front of you and you are losing your power, you're losing, you're essentially losing your intelligence. And so since I did not lose my power, I did not lose my intelligence. I've been given a total vision of what the issue is blocking me from connecting, having deeper committed connections. Oh. It's this life is a video game. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, clearly, especially once you start, um, you know, playing with the joystick, it's so obvious that it is a video game, but it's the joystick. Uh, playing with the joystick. You just had to throw that double entendre out there when you don't <laughs> play with the joystick. <laughs> 
exactly, exactly. Oh, so brilliant. Um, there's so many things that you've just talked about that I I feel like we could go on any number of um, of journeys. Um, but because I'm I'm hoping that uh, you know people are probably like, oh my gosh, I've never even gotten a natal chart reading done. And maybe some people who are watching this are like, wait, okay, Scorpio, I've got the idea of what this energy is, but how does this apply to me and my natal chart? Um, and I know that you do natal chart reading. That's a service that you offer. Um, yeah. But could you maybe give us an idea of how each person's um, version of Scorpio might have a little bit of customization? So yeah, that is a brilliant question. So we all have all 12 signs of the zodiac somewhere within our charts based upon the houses because every person has 12 houses in their astrology chart and so it just depends which house scorpio is dominating and or ruling so wherever it's dominating or ruling that is going to be the house that this scorpio full moon is a is affecting so you want to see the house and, and see what is being highlighted what is also coming to a culmination and ending you know what is being uh brought to a level of the four to a heightened position of power now you also want to look to see where you have pluto who is the ruler of scorpio where do you have pluto in your chart and see what pluto is doing and aspects it's making because that is also going to give you insight on that Scorpio um, energy. Now, I want to take it a bit further. The planet that is exalted in the sign of Scorpio is Uranus. So you also want to see what Uranus is doing. And right now, Uranus is in the sign of Taurus. It's in a fall right now. And it is in the, yeah, it's in the opposite sign of Scorpio. So this uh, particular Scorpio full moon is greatly being affected by the essence of other people, other people's worth, other people's sense of self-worth, other people's resources, other people's ideas of pleasure and um, senses and things of the sort, you know, in appreciation. Do you really appreciate your friends and the people that are in your life, your platform, your network, and, you know, all of these different things. And if you, you do not, those kinds of connections are going to be whisked and washed away from you at this particular time or there's going to be some kind of refinement with other people uh, um in your your finances as well like the money that you earn and receive from your network and other people and things like that so that yeah makes a lot of sense and i love what you're talking about about some some things are going to be whisked and washed away as if you know it's like as if you're cleaning your laundry and you're like, Hey, this isn't quite working out. So this is going to be whisk and washed away versus other things that you're feeling powerful and you're feeling sovereign about them. Those things being uplifted and highlighted. That makes so much sense to me um, from a um, just practical standpoint. Yeah. <laughs> Taurus is the sign of practicality. So, you know, and, I, and what I want to just tell everyone is that it's very important that you understand that every sign of the zodiac is important. Every sign of the zodiac, zodiac has beauty within it. You want to be all signs. You don't want to be overly spiritual and just all airy fairy. You don't want to be overly rigid and practical. That's boring. You know, you and you don't want to just be mental and cerebral. You also want to be physical. You want to be confident. You want to be all of the elements. The elements are essentially our parents, you know, and when you embrace the all, you become all and everything for yourself. Then you become a magnetic frequency to all and everything that you desire. And we talked a little bit uh, about the mirror and the inversion and how each person that you interact with is an, an inverted uh, version of, of um, I'm not going to say this as well as you said it, you say it so beautifully, but basically um, an inverted uh, idea of who you are and what you're working on. Do yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I want to encourage everyone to check out my video on mirror work that's on YouTube to get deeper into it, um, you know, but nevertheless, when it comes to the mirror aspect, we, or concept, we have issues with it because we think, I'm a nice person. I'm an empath. Um, he's not a mirror to me. He's a narcissist or da, 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 da. And it's like, no, the mirror concept is an inversion. So if you are a codependent empath, your mirror reflection 
is a narcissistic, an egotistical narcissist because they are mirroring your fulfilled need. A, 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 what is it called? A, um, an empath is someone, a codependent empath, I would say, is someone who is here to help people. Okay, they're here to help people and see people's problems. Well, if you're here to help people and see people's problems, you're going to attract people that have a lot of problems. Whatever you say that you're a solution to, the universe is going to come in and validate your notion. So if there are problems on planet Earth th that you see, you see a bunch of racism, you see a bunch of hurting children, and you see rape, you see all this unfairness when it comes to matters involving the world, then you're the solution. So you're going to be faced with the problem. That problem is your mirror. It's not the other solution. No. No. It's the, the, the mirror reflection to the doctor is not a nurse. The mirror reflection to the doctor is a sick patient. That patient is what validates the doctor for doing his job. You know, the mirror to the lawyer is not the judge. The mirror to the lawyer is the defendant the, or the plaintiff. You know, that's the person that is validating that person's existence. You know, um, and, and, and so... When we talk about this concept of the mirror, this is why it's important when we hear certain gurus talk about becoming nothing. Don't don't want for anything. Don't, you know, need anything because when you don't need anything, then you gain everything. You know, when you're not seeing issues in the world, you, you that or when you're not seeing yourself as a solution to issues in the world, then you're not going to be seeing a bunch of those issues. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to not fight for certain things in the world. We're in the age of Aquarius where we're creating change. I'm in a fight right now. I'm in the fight when it comes to gender roles, but I know that this fight is going to come to an end. I'm going to, you know, plant this. The fight that I'm taking on is essentially like planting a seed that then will grow and flourish. But I'm not even speaking about so much of the problem when it comes to the gender roles. I'm speaking about the what I see, the beauty of what is coming from expressing this beautiful thing that we have when it comes to feminine men and masculine women in the union of those two, rather than focusing on, oh, you know, alpha men, they do this and they do that. No, I just see the beauty of feminine men and, and alpha women coming together. I see the beauty of that. And so I'm promoting that. So instead of just talking about the issue so much, but, but you, you know, everything in the, the world, you're going to see the 10% and the 90% of it, like the yin yang symbol. So you'll see 10% of the problem, but then focus on the solution and just live and promote the solution, promote what you love rather than fighting against what you hate. So when it comes to that, that um, mirror concept, you have to know that when you see yourself as a solution, you're going to see the problem everywhere. Ever since I started talking about the uh, me being a solution to uh, certain gender roles when it comes to men and women, oh my gosh, all I'm seeing, people are, oh my God, this is exactly what I've been dealing with. Oh, da, da, da. I'm seeing so many masculine men puffing their chests out and, you know, so many uh, sensitive men hiding and shying away. Like, I don't want to be a part of all of this. I'm seeing it more, you know, because I called myself to be the solution. Now I'm seeing the problem more, but then, but you don't want to stay there. You know, and this is what I'm talking about when it comes to that mirror. You want to shift it now. What is just the beauty of the shift of this and bring that and let that grow? So that makes so much sense to me. And I and I, I love what you're saying. It makes so much sense. And I just want to like almost hone in on one little thing, which is to say it's not a bad thing necessarily to be experiencing um, this sort of uh, this mirror reflection, I'm assuming. You know, like uh, on the, it's like yeah. sometimes you need to explore yeah, this path or that path or this path or that path. And I think going into that sort of almost like this is good and this is a bad experience. This was, this is me being good. This is me being bad. Um, I love what you're saying about almost just like not seeing yourself as a solution, but focusing on the solution, the 90%. Yeah. And that's exactly, exactly what I mean. Don't run away from your mirror reflections, but know what it is. Because I hear a lot of people saying, well, I'm a nice person. Why do I attract all these assholes? Don't complain about attracting assholes when you are being the solution to assholes. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Just know that that is what your mirror reflection is. Don't expect, oh, I'm like, th-, because a lot of people say, oh, um, in, in the law of attraction or the metaphysical world, we think, oh, you, you get what you think in all of these things, but it's an inversion. <laughs> It's an inversion. So that's why it's important to become all things like even myself, I have denied certain parts of myself. Like I've denied the gangster energy in me. I've denied the sexual energy with me, repressed that energy. And I'm like thinking I'm just this holy goddess guru that is coming to save the world. No, the fuck I'm not. When I thought that I was just this holy goddess guru came to save the world. All I attracted was a bunch of lost souls. I I don't have time for that. So I, you know, I got all of the elements in me and now I bring in, I invite all of the experience of life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so beautifully said. It's really worth checking out that YouTube video. Cause that YouTube video, um, totally opened my mind to different dynamics that I had at play in my life and how I was absolutely, um, seeing myself as a solution to a problem and therefore attracting the, oh, even just, um, attracting the conscious awareness of that problem. So that I yeah. can be that solution. Yeah. And, and I'm so happy that you mentioned like the not running from it aspect it could, because it's definitely not about running from it. It's just about recognizing it. You know, um, you want to be fearless like Aries and you want to fight past certain issues, but know that when you take on a fight, when you take on being a solution to some a thing, you are going to attract the issue of that thing to you. So you got to think about what you want to attract. Like, um, I want to attract a, a bunch of billionaires. Well, then become the solution for their issues and you will attract them. You know, that's the mirror. Now, um, I just want to encourage people too that may be uh, tuning in. When it, I, I, I love how you are interviewing me um, and speaking about all of these things because I'm not just an astrologer. I'm definitely a metaphysician as well as a spirit interpreter. I read the stars, but I speak to all things. I'm an other dimensional being. I speak to beings in other dimensions. They speak to me. They um, are the homies. I've been abducted by aliens. I deal with all of that. I speak to people's family members who have transcended. I do, I'm all in everywhere, you know? Um, But yet, and nevertheless, for those who are tuning in because they're interested in the astrology aspect of everything that I have to share, I do have a course um, where I teach the basics, the fundamental basics of astrology in an in-depth way. Um, I have a program out there and you can check out my website, astrologicschool.com. And for people who are more advanced when it comes to astrology and they want to learn it deeper. I do one-on-one coaching with astrology. It's astrology one-on-one and I can teach you anything that you are interested in learning with astrology. And um, yeah, you can find that on my website as well, astrologicschool.com, A-S-T-R-O-L-O-G-I-C school.com. You are a Capricorn with a Cancer rising sign and you have the moon in the sign of Aries. So we're going to be discussing all of this. Let's start with the rising sign. Um, When it comes to the rising sign, it's the outer personality. It's the outer reflection of the self. It's the part of the self that we allow others to get to know on a first impression basis. And it describes what we look like, how we see the world, how we perceive things and all of that good stuff. Now, when it comes to being a cancer rising, cancer risings tend to have this familiar flair about them. Like this energy, people tend to feel like they've met you before or you look like someone they know or something like that. Um, or if people even feel, could feel at times that they are very embraced or warmed or, or they could get close to you, um, you know, when they meet you and things like that. Now, um, even though that may be the case, cancer rising still have a guard up. They still have some type of a wall, some type of a blockage. They don't let everyone just into their personal space and world, even though it may seem like, oh, we're all close and buddy, buddy. No, that I'm just, you know, a warm person. I'm just nice and all of that. But, um, you know, I'm not going to let you in on everything, you know. Um, but that surface is just deep itself. So now when it comes to being a cancer rising, too, oftentimes cancer risings can wear their emotions on their sleeve. Okay. So you've got to be mindful of that. And um, in cancer risings, they tend to have long faces or circular shaped faces. And they could definitely look like their parents, like a spitting image of both of their 
their parents. Um, sometimes uh, for years on end, they'll look more like the father. Another time they'll look more like the mother, all that type of stuff. So um, now you have also the asteroid Juno sitting here in the first house. So this is an indication of really having to marry oneself um, because the way that you have to learn to nurture and care for yourself is the way that you're going to have to learn to nurture and care for another person. But if you don't know how to care for yourself, you're not going to know how to care for another person. And your, um, your reflection is always going to be a bit estranged from you until you properly accept your mirror. You know, it's kind of like, Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, like say for instance, there's a woman who um, she has a particular look, any particular look, but she hates herself. She doesn't like what she looks like. So she goes and she gets her body done. She gets her butt done and she gets her breast done and she gets her stomach done. And she gets all these injectables in her face and she bleaches her hair and tans her skin and all of this stuff. And she's like, where's my mate? Where's my mate? And she can't find him. And she has this like fake plastic ass personality. She can't find him because he can't see her because he's looking for her original body and physique. And she, when he sees her, he doesn't recognize her because she's not anything to his liking or to what he um, know in his heart is his wife. He can't recognize her. So this is like you uh, becoming in love with your image um, and, and not just on a physical level, but on a spiritual, mental, emotional nurturance level for that. Okay. Now with you having the Capricorn sun in the cancer rising sign, you are luckily a more balanced personality. Okay. Even in, in what's beautiful about this is like, you will know that you have certain poor character traits and you will own them. Like, you know what? I am kind of fucked up in that area. Well, that's me. <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then you, you, what's so beautiful. It's like, you know what? Let me not even unleash this on this person because it's not even their fault. So you will take accountability a lot of times, but at the same time with taking accountability, you could also stop yourself from having certain experiences and you could kind of lock yourself up, kind of like living in a prison within yourself, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a trapping. Um, and then there will be that indecisiveness and that going back and forth. And it's like you yourself are a couple who's arguing. Uh, yeah, I like it. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a married couple who won't leave each other alone because of this, this codependency that you have on both sides of the self. And you guys are like, well, you need to do this. Well, you need to do that. I took care of that already. Well, why didn't you do that? Uh, da, 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 da. And it's like, oh my God, I need to stop. I need a break. Oh my God. Like I'm just fighting. So, um, this is, this is very deep and with, but what's so beautiful is that you have this, first of all, let's talk about the beautiful aspect of this, because when we could stop the fighting and the warring or understanding where it's coming from and how to work with it and, and shift these energies, you will become this very whole person, more whole than many people even get an opportunity to reach on planet earth. Like your divine masculine and divine feminine in such a symbiotic balance with one another. And there's just so much harmony that you become like this electrifying, attractive being to other people where other people are just so drawn to you because you you are so um certain in in you live in this center space which which the all dwells in the all that is dwells in that center space that in between space and you know the the complete opposite spectrums of the self have been warring with one another like a teeter-totter 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 until it comes into they walk both toward that center balance and learn how to harmonize. Okay. And that's what you have been learning um, throughout this life. So with that being stated, everything in your life, you are to seek balance. Okay. Is this going to bring me peace? Is this going to bring me balance? Does this make sense? Or asking yourself, am I just not doing this out of fear? Is fear stopping me? 
or am I being lazy in trying to take a fast route or am I actually um, taking a more grounded and practical perspective to handle these situations, you know, now let me dive a little bit deeper into the moon and the sign of Aries and it sits here in the 10th and the fourth house. Let me see. looks like that could be the third house as well. The 10th, the third house, fourth house, and it makes an opposition to Pluto. So this is an indication of having dealt with some traumatic issues in the earlier childhood years concerning, um, concerning, look, this looks like violence. Um, this looks like there was, there could have even been a death, a murder or something of the sort that could have rocked your earlier childhood years. This could have affected there could have been a divorce, uh, breakup from the parents, um, issues, power struggles and control, um, domestic violence issues, um, selfish tendencies. Looks like one of the parents could have been self-consumed, a narcissist or something like that. Um, angry, frustrated, um, always working and concerned about what they have to do for themselves and in their own work and career. Uh, and it, we have this opposition to Pluto in the fourth. So this deal, this could create issues within the shadow self of emotional abandonment issues and um, like the, the empty void within. There could have been some sexual abuse issues as well and just overall emotional manipulation. It looks like this is going on here. This, um, this particular alignment also makes a square to your sun sign. So these things that you experienced in your earlier childhood years affect your confidence, greatly affect your confidence, the way that you feel about yourself, the way that you see yourself, the way that you, it, it could even be difficult for you to really understand your um, identity in the world around you or how pe other people may view, view you. And um, so some of these negative traits and tendencies, you could have actually, from this parent, you could have actually picked up yourself. And um, when it comes to either anger, when it comes to narcissism, when it comes to emotional abandon, abandonment or selfish tendencies and things of the sort, um, you could have picked up some of these negative uh, tendencies within yourself, but even picking them up will cause you to deal with more internal wars and flames and fires because there will be like foreign type emotions that you have like this isn't really me like this doesn't feel right this doesn't feel good you know I shouldn't treat this person like that or I shouldn't see this person this way what's going on this is this really brings everything back to the roots of the self and the need to repot the self and back to the mirror you know and understanding that life on earth is a mirror reflection to who you are as a being and so you are really being called to readdress uh, this energy for yourself and heal. And you have been called and you've been doing the work too. Um, you have been doing the work, which is a beautiful thing. You, you for sure, between the years of 2017 to 2020, were called to seek out professional psychological help, therapists and things of the sort, excuse me, um, around that time. And even before that time, you've been called to like work with a life coach to assist you with getting things into proper perspective and order and, you know, organizing your days and all of that type of stuff. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, um, with that opposition though, to, uh, Pluto, I was mentioning dealing with a shadow self. Um, there are certain emotions that you may be a little bit too stoic with at times, and you can deny yourself and you can neglect yourself at times when it comes to your emotions because of how you were emotionally neglected in your childhood in your past so sometimes you will just like um not really handle or deal with your emotions in in a healthy way and so sometimes you can deal with some internal fires that aren't put out or, or not healthily diffused sometimes they they will go away but then they could get triggered again, by something um, that someone does, especially in a relationship or someone that you have some type of an intimate or personal emotional relationship with, they can spark and trigger these, these emotions and, and make you snap, you know? So you got to be mindful of that. All right. Now, um, what this particular position or aspect in the chart, the moon opposite um, 
Pluto really calls for in then it's in moon, not just moon opposite Pluto, but moon in the the uh, 10th house, it calls to get um, therapy and emotional help and, you know, just so that you could process your emotions in a better, uh, more healthier way and all of that. And know that you don't have to take everything in for yourself and would you freeing this energy of freeing that inner child, freeing those inner emotions and understand we're not supposed to act on our emotions. No one is. We're supposed to understand them, reflect on them. We're not supposed to overshadow them and neglect them, but let them live, let them have their experience and then reflect on them. And, um, and then we're supposed to make um, rational decisions based upon the information we receive from our emotions, but make the most practical, take the most practical actions with them, most responsible action with them. And with you taking care of yourself like this, this will allow you to, to trust yourself when it comes to getting close to people or allowing other people to get close to you. And this will allow you to even understand other people's emotions and not in a empathetic way where you're taking on other people's nonsense and heavy, heavy burdens and bullshit, but where you can be um, empathetic and helpful at the same time. Like, yeah, you know what? I understand where you're coming from. That has to be difficult. The work environment, it just, it seems like it's just so much right now. And uh, I, you know, I wish I could do more, but I know that you're going to get through it and I will assist you in the ways that I am able to, but without you becoming a slave to this person's situation, you know what I'm saying? Having health the boundaries, but still being passionate and present enough at the same time. Okay. So let's talk about your North and South node. You have the North node in the sign of Virgo and it sits here. It sits here in the third in the ninth houses. And you have your South node in the sign of Pisces. It sits here in the ninth house, but you're, it's also your midheaven, so the ninth house, midheaven, and this is also the third house. Okay, so you got a lot, you got a lot going on with this. Yeah, now, when it comes, no huh? Either. And that huh? Third house is no joke either. No, it isn't. Oh. It really isn't. So, when it comes to you having the North Node in the sign of Virgo, let's talk about that first. North Node in Virgo. It's all about you getting grounded and, and getting practical about your life, okay? It's about you developing healthy habits. It's about you developing people, mm -hmm, about you le de developing a level of organization and order and structure for your, your life, okay? Um, Virgo North Node tells us that it's not about just coming to a final destination. It's about the way we live our lives in our everyday. It's about creating a happy, healthy daily routine that will inevitably lead us to reaching our goals. Okay. So how do you live your Sunday through Monday? What do you do? And, um, the Virgo North node is about you, um, getting into your health and your nutrition in a big, 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 big way and letting go of uh, the South Node in Pisces. You got to let go of nasty habits and fearful things and just fear in general and anxiety. And you will let go of fear and anxiety if you would allow yourself to organize your daily routine and you will start to watch your patterns. And if you see like, okay, well, I do this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And, and then I do this on these days. And this is how this goes. I wake up every day around 6am. I do um, some aerobics just to get my blood circulating and going. Um, I do some breathing exercises. I make my to-do list and I prepare my juice, so on and so forth. And I do my meal prepping. I take my shower, da, 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 da. make sure all of my things are organized for my day and if you are doing things in that way and you are reaching your deadlines and you're handling all of that you're not going to deal with the oh oh my gosh I got to do this oh oh well what in and oh this isn't good you know what I'm just going to put it out there because that, that, like no no you know because you're going to have everything in an organized fashion now when you have the north node and a sign of Virgo in a third house this is about you developing a system to uh, deal with your um um, daily tasks like going to the grocery store and the post office and all of that. Okay. This is about you. Um, this is about you making, taking your thoughts 
in a different way, like organizing your mind, organizing your thoughts. And when you have a fearful thought come up, you know, you are being called to align that with practicality. Like this, does this really make sense? Is this even practical? You know, does, is this truth or, or am I thinking this because I'm in fear or because of some outdated belief and all of that? Now, another thing is you're being called to, to, rely more on the facts rather than just beliefs or um you're and you're also being called to letting go of over promising and under delivering as well by just stating the facts stating what can be done so when say for instance you're working with someone and they're expecting you to do all of this stuff and you're like yeah yeah we could do it and we could go all the way there and it's like okay you know what realistically let's see what could be done. So we will have a few hours out of the day to do this. So instead of this taking a couple of weeks, this is actually going to take about a three month cycle. This is about a three month process. Da, 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 da. You know, this is about you really putting things into proper perspectives based upon factual information and experiences that you have had that you've seen fail. Like, no, I've seen this not work. I've seen this fail, you know? And um, this is about you making, first of all, you're supposed to be right writing a lot more, writing in a journal, diary, utilizing planners, all of that stuff, making project plans when it comes to you doing things, all of that type of stuff, rather than just like, okay, you know what, let me just go and jump into it and see how it goes. No, get the fuck off the boat, yep. get yep. into the office, sit behind the desk and construct this plan. Yeah, I so feel that. And I feel like that's where I actually resonate with that North Node Virgo. It's like, mm -hmm. I love writing. I write every day. It's definitely, wow. I, uh, it, I, at first, actually the daily habit, I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't be writing every day. <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, that resonates with me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's excellent. Um, yeah, you've been called to move past some of those those airy fairy like um, spiritual things like, oh, what does this mean? Oh, this is a sign. Da -da. You know, all of that type of stuff. And when it comes to well, let me see, when it comes to this position, though, uh, this definitely ties into work. That's for sure. And let me see something else here. This definitely ties into work and you know you getting work done you do have your jupiter you do have uh, the north node making a conjunction to jupiter as well as mars and even lilith and let me make sure this is in the right alignment and also saturn so girl you got this north node conjuncting a lot of stuff going on in your chart so you are supposed to be more optimistic in your life and the things that you do um in in more optimistic about handling the details you know like okay you know what i don't this is some monotonous ass stuff but let me get it done because when i take care of the small things in life i won't have this big ass grandiose issue that i have to figure out you know and having to improve this big old flop of a thing that happened because i i took care of all of the the threads as i was building you know like uh it's like what will smith says don't think about building a whole wall think about laying one brick perfectly and then the next brick and then the next brick and then the next brick you know it's about being a builder and understanding how to build so um in building the self um Okay, so now with you having the North Node making a conjunction to Mars, you are supposed to be getting into action. When let me ask you a question: When it comes to burlesque, is that a um is is burlesque like a like dancing? It is. Oh, that's why you're being pulled away from it. Hmm, that's interesting. Tell me about that. Because your South Node is in Pisces. Pisces rules dance. Yeah, you you should become you could be a burlesque book writer. You could be an author. <laughs> Continue. Huh? You're like reading my mind. That's great. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm moving there. <laughs> yes, you're supposed yeah. to become a writer. Um, and this is where you will make more money. Okay. <laughs> and just be, yeah, speaking about it or, you know, um, there's so many different things traveling with it. It would be really awesome for you to um, take, take burlesque to different cultures that don't know anything about it. You know, you, you could be speaking and preaching to the choir where you are with it. But if you brought this new form, I like say you brought this to China and they didn't give 
no fucks about burlesque, didn't really know about it, didn't give it no attention. Then you bring it to China and you tell them like the healing effects of it and all of that type of stuff. You could make it big, it could pop, it will boom. Working with other people and other cultures and things of the sort actually works well, works in your favor. Okay. Um, okay, so yes, being a writer is really good, being a very detail-oriented writer. Now, getting into um, healthy mind habits and helping people, not just with their, like the movement of their body, but telling them that if your mind isn't fluid or moving, or you don't put things into proper perspective in your mind, your body's going to be stuck. And so like taking people on the journey of the mind of the burlesque artist type of a thing would is is more in alignment for your chart okay i love it yep um so that's why it's so important going to the source of our creation you know our spiritual selves our spirit our soul that allowed us to be created and living in these human bodies it's about you getting back to that person and people like myself you know psychologists therapists astrologers and you know metaphysician um coaches and things like that we help people get to their soul so that they can get to that recreation of the self. I hope that you enjoyed the interview. Check out Kateria on Instagram at Kateria Knows, as well as in the links that are shared below. I also want to share the exciting news that shortly after our interview, I was inspired to complete and self-publish my book, The Real Life Burlesque Workbook. Yes, that's right. The discussion that you heard at the end about a burlesque book is complete and it's available for pre-sale now. So check that out at my website, redhotannie.com. And in the meantime, love yourself.